Hi everyone, I'm humbly Anna Anders here, the founder of ForGlobalPeace.com and uh, we're a peace flag company and I'm a peace flag maker and I have some logos that I would like to attach to a product line and to humbly pursue the cause of peace from local to global. But in pursuing this cause of peace, I gotta tell you I haven't had much peace and I haven't had much, um, much support in pursuing this cause as well and much respect for pursuing it as well. It's been a long road and the struggle has been so real. So real on so many levels that I don't, I can't even imagine if I had to pull out my heart, my soul, my spirit, pull it out and show it to you guys. Uh, even my brain. <laughs> oh my God, the insanity of what I've had to endure thus far. But I can't pull that stuff out and lay it out for you to see on a counter on a countertop or a, you know put it under a microscope or whatever. But um, and you know I can't even hit rewind on my life path to to tell you and to show you what manifested. But all I know is that on March seventeenth, nineteen ninety, my whole life was uh, catapulted into another dimension. Um, yeah, my whole life changed dramatically. I was a wife, mother of three beautiful children, and living at 7011 Virginia Avenue. And I belonged to a family, humbly. And um, I had no, at, at that exact time period of life, I had no desire to ever move up and out of uh, 7011 Virginia Avenue. I knew what I knew. My family, my friends, my job, my kids, their school, their, our community, our church, St. Charles Church. Um, my parents, you know, my family, my siblings, all of it. I mean, matter of fact, the night before March 17th, 1990, I was at my sister Goli's house. We, we were celebrating St. Patty's Day, my husband and I, my sister and her boyfriend then. And, um, you know, uh, and my three children even, and we had our kids together and all that happy stuff. But um, we, we, in those days, we used to drink, okay, drink and smoke weed and do that kind of stuff, um, even with our kids. So, uh, truth be told, my, my daughter, my, I'm sorry, I apologize. Truth be told, my sister Goli said, I'll keep your kids for you, Anna. And we went, I went home. I went home to celebrate with my husband on the way home. And we kind of hit all the bars all the way down Ridge Road from Pleasant Valley. And in the process of doing that, I, I would never... I would have never been able to tell anybody, hey, I'm going to go home and get my ass beat real good from my husband that night. No, I did not know that. I did not know that at all. We were drinking. What I thought we were partying. I thought we were having a great time. I did not know I would go home and take the beating of my lifetime from my own husband. March 17, 1990, St. Patty's Day. And thank God, Goli, this is a shout out to you. This video is for you, Sheila Paoli. I want to say thank you for having my babies that night. That, you as a sister, you were guarding an angel for me that way. And I got to say thank you for that. But I got to tell you, from that point on, Goli, I don't know what happened, but as I started to wake up from the mess of my life, as my God started to message me how bad that mess was, when I started to wake up from my deep family dysfunctional sleep, and started to see the truth for what it was, people started making fun of me, Golly, and you were one of them. You, my sister, I remember, and I hope you remember this too, because at that time, you had moved on from your boyfriend, Dino, from Pleasant Valley, and you moved on to Grantwood Drive with your boyfriend, Paul, your next boyfriend, living there. And I was, I was humbly trying to draw my boundaries of healing for myself as a battered woman. I didn't know I was a battered woman in addition to having a bunch of other issues. I didn't know I came from an alcoholic family, Golly, just like you didn't know. I didn't know how bad things really were. I did not know that my sister Golly would move next door to a woman by the name of Helen Scavara. I did not know that I would be detaching from my family just to take care of myself emotionally and spiritually. I did not know that I would ever get a phone call from my sister Goli one day, laughing on the other end of the phone. Anna, I think there's a battered woman that lives next door to me. I think, what should I do? How can I help her? And then you snick snickered. I'll never forget how insulting that was to your sister Anna Goli. 
The scars of what you did to me and that contents of that conversation scarred the inside of my ears and my soul and my spirit and my heart for the rest of my life. And you, it didn't stop there, goalie. It really did not stop there. It manifested over the years and throughout the years, even to include special occasions, goalie. You very much disappointed me in many ways, on many levels, emotionally and spiritually, goalie. But I got to remember, like I told my brother the other day, I was looking for loyalty from a sister who wasn't loyal to another sister. So that was my own fault and my own shortcomings, Goldie. And I realized that. I realized that with my real eyes, all your real lies. See? I realized that with my real eyes and all your real lies. What I want to say to you today, Goalie, is I want you to call me. I want to be able to iron out the wrinkles of our relationship and our lives and to heal our relationships as siblings. But what I want you to know, Goalie, is I'm I completely and have been thoroughly disgusted with you for a long time now. And I re refuse to do the sibling picture because you have not behaved like a respectful sibling. And I'm calling you out on your shit. When I was looking for Gina and doing activism work, Goalie, I came to your home to do activism work humbly. I also went to your neighbors. And I will never forget what you told your neighbor. You screamed out, get away from her, she's crazy. Get away from her, she's crazy. Goalie, what I want to tell you is that I'm not crazy. I'm not the one that's crazy, Goalie. And it's time for you to tell people and to take responsibility emotionally and spiritually of the harms that you've caused your beautiful sister Anna here. Because all I wanted was a beautiful relationship with my beautiful sister Goli all along. And my sister Jackie to be included. So, a person can only take so much, so much. For my father's funeral... You gave me the gift of deception and betrayal and rejection again across the many miles over the phone when I heard you say to our brother Joseph, hang up the phone, Joe. She's all the way in Arizona. There's nothing she can do. You, my child, think you got away with something. But you didn't, Goldie. And what I want to say to you humbly is this. Spiritually, for all the harms that you've done to me that way, you will pay. Or maybe you've already paid. Um, but I just want to let you know, as your big sister, you insulted me. You didn't insult me on one occasion. You insulted me on many occasions. And I got to tell you, Goli, I wish you could have went to Helen Scavara's funeral with me. Because you would have seen the 17 or 15 bullet holes in her forehead. She did go to the battered women support group meetings with me, Goalie, too. And I wish you would have went to Stanley Scavara's funeral as well, Goalie, because he had an intraoral shotgun blast. There was nothing left of his skull, just the tip of his chin and barely the tip of his nose. And his little boys, his two boys, like your two boys, were running around that funeral home asking their relatives, Can I get you a beer? Can I empty your ashtray? Can I do this? Can I do that? All your sister could do was stand in the fog, in the fog of the alcoholic drama, trauma, and chaos that manifested up out of that cloud of smoke. And it's been, um, how do I say this? It's been a